Hello Animos fans and welcome back to the Animos universe. We're doing another analysis and it is on something that we'll just call the Yerk's DNA tracking computer. I've got an image here of a very futuristic sci-fi looking computer control room with big screens, which probably looks nothing like... Well, no, no let's, be, let's be fair. This is sort of how I envisioned it in the book, except a little less futuristic, more 90s computer style, but like the bluish black tones going on and the big screen there and a vast open space. So some of the basics are kind of correct there, but it probably is more 90s in terms of computer technology standard. But anyway, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to discuss why is this a thing in the series? So it's only in book 49, The Diversion. And this is how we're introduced to the concept that introduces this, okay? So DNA tracking computer, obviously it's for tracking the origins of DNA. Why is this a thing? All I know is what my mum said. Two men broke into a veterinary ward last night. It wasn't the usual smash and grab, and no, they weren't after drugs, which surprised Mom too. They wanted blood samples, specific blood samples. Tiger, elephant, eagle, rhino and grizzly, gorilla and wolf. Rachel stared at her. Our battle morphs? Right, Cassie nodded. They showed no interest in the warthogs or baboons. One of Mom's lab techs stumbled in on them. They really roughed him up, especially, she glanced at me, especially when he told them the gardens didn't have a red-tailed hawk. Seven pairs of eyes, including Axe's stork eyes, gazed up at the rafters. I turned away to preen a wing. Cassie went on. The lab tech said they'd been cold and methodical up to that point, but when they couldn't get the hawk sample, they just went nuts, like they were try like they were afraid to leave without it. Yeah, I bet, said Marco. I bet they were peeing their pants wondering how to explain the concept of failure to Vissel One. They're after something bigger. Tom brought home a flyer yesterday. The sharing is sponsoring a huge blood drive. Tom was Jake's older brother. Tom was a controller, a high-ranking member of the sharing, the front organization for the Yerks. Cassie took a deep breath. Here's what I think. There's only one reason the Yerks would suddenly be interested in blood, DNA. They're collecting samples of our morph animals, and they're collecting as many human samples as they can. She looked at us. They're searching for humans with strands of animal DNA in their blood. Silence. Which means... Marco sighed. They know we're human, said Rachel. The Yerks are searching for the DNA of the morphs, that the Animorphs use, or the Andalite Bandits use, they're also getting human DNA and bringing all that together. So, of course, they put those puzzle pieces together and say, the Yerks are looking for DNA matches. Which implies that the Yerks know that it's humans who are the Andalite Bandits. So it's not Andalite Bandits, it's human Bandits. I can't remember if Visa 3, Visa 1 at this point, is actually in charge of this program or whether it's like a, a sub Visa somewhere because I don't remember if Visa 3 was actually... Visa 1, Esplin, let's call him Esplin. I don't remember if Esplin was actually in this book. I'd have to read it again. It's been a while and it's somehow one of the more forgettable books of the series. I don't know how, it just was. Anyway, the animals established that this sort of thing must exist because of this. Some sort of machine that takes in a DNA sequence, not necessarily the DNA itself, but the the sequence that is computed. I've, I've worked in a DNA, DNA lab before. You get the DNA, you put it through a series of bio, uh, chemical processes, send it off somewhere, and they send you back a file, a computer file, with the written sequence. So they're probably taking those sequences and placing them into this computer, which somehow tracks where the DNA comes from. 
I, I, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves again. We actually need to find this computer before we can speculate. We'll probably leave all the speculations to the end. So, the animals come to the conclusion that there must be a computer system somewhere where all this DNA is going. So they come up with a plan to find out where it is. Look, the Yerks don't know we're human, yet. They only suspect. If we really were analytes, we'd want them to waste time and manpower analysing human blood samples, right? So if we bust in, destroy their project, we only prove we're not Andalites. Better than the alternative, Rachel argued. We can stop the Yerk saying, yeah, they'll know we're human, but they won't know which humans. Or we can let them continue till they find us, which they will. There is another option, said Jake. We can get inside, find out what they know, then decide what to do. The research is probably on a computer somewhere, at whatever company the Yerks are using as a front. If we can get our hands on it, maybe we can destroy any incriminating data without the Yerks catching on. They continue their research and come up blank. Axe, is that something you can handle? Of course, Prince Jake. Axe whipped his tail forward. We need only find the correct facility. Not a problem, said Marco. We hack into the computer system of every blood bank, hospital and clinic on the planet. The one we can't get into, the one with the extraterrestrial firewall, that will be the Yerks. And boy howdy, John Bon Jovi, Lila, what? I always want to do videos. I think it's my, my talking. She comes and she's like comforted by it or something. She's now going to roll onto the desk and want attention. They do what they said they were going to do. So Marco and Axe manage to hack into all these systems and they find one that seems to have a weird sort of firewall blocking any sort of information. Marco was hunkered down in front of the computer at the back of the scoop. I perched on the CD tower behind him. He leaned back in his chair. Hospitals, labs, clinics, community blood banks. They all opened right up for us. Kind of scary when you think about it. Your complete medical history is just a click away, available to any nut job with internet access. But then we get to this one. He motions towards the computer screen. Midtown Bioservices, Inc. Suddenly it's like breaking into the CIA. So they found the place where they believe the Yerks are, and they're correct. So the Animos then proceed to go to this building, bio service, whatever it was called. We will do a separate analysis on that, by the way. We're talking specifically about the computer that's within this building. They go into this place and they find it. We're near the center of the building. The crowd of scurrying lab techs and office workers thinned out. We marched down a nearly empty hall, turned the corner and stopped. Before us lay a narrow passageway. At the end was another pair of solid metal doors, guarded by an armed halberdier. The guard levelled his dracon beam at us. Um, Marco said, think we found their computer? We then go into this computer room and you'll probably see from the description I'm about to give you why I've gone for this sort of thing. I looked through loads of images and I thought they were all the wrong colour. They were all too bright and I didn't want that, I wanted something moody like this. But, I don't know, maybe for the thumbnail I'll choose a better image, but here's the description and also we'll go into the description of what they see on the big screen at the front. Marco was right. It looks like mission control. An electronic map filled one wall. Little green dots were scattered across it, connected like a web to one large red dot. A tiny orange dot flashed beside the red one. A bank of computers faced the map. Rows of numbers scrolled across their screens. Analyzing data, Axe said unnecessarily. But other than the computers, the guard and us, the room was empty. No human controllers, no Hawkbajir. These must be blood collection sites. And this, she tapped the big red dot. This must be where we're standing. See, all the green dots lead here. But what's this? She pointed to the orange dot. Yerkpool? Marco guessed. Prince Jake, we may be too late. Four Hawkbajir stared at him. They found a match. Axe studied the monitor. Yes, but I don't think the Yerks are aware of it yet. This file has not been accessed since the computer analysed the data, and it is only a partial match. Partial? Marco circled the computer bag. What does that mean? 
they either find animal DNA or they don't, right? Axe shook his head. This is very strange. It indicates a human who has significant family ties with one of the Andalite bandits. He leaned toward the screen. But the computer has not yet uncovered the identity of this Andalite bandit. Oh man, Jake. Cassie closed her eyes. We overlooked something. Something huge. Our blood is all over the place. Every time we fight these creeps, we bleed. Traces of our human DNA is floating around in all that animal blood. All they have to do is scoop it up and wait for a match. So we've got this big screen in this mission control style room, which is why I've gone for this sort of aesthetic here with a bit more alien feel to it. Got that big screen with a big red dot, which we can assume means that's where they are, like the you are here dot <laughs> that you see on maps. The Yerks had that in there because otherwise they would just completely forget. And around it are green dots and there's one flashing orange one. And then we, di we discuss what this machine actually does and come to the conclusion that the reason they're collecting both animal and human DNA is that the animal DNA contains the human DNA. And we will eventually get into how the morphing technology works when we get to that particular analysis. But what's implied is that you always maintain that human DNA, which sort of makes sense really, because if you just morph the animal and all you've got left is animal DNA, what does your body use to bring you, to help you demorph? You must keep that human DNA around somewhere, like just sort of attached somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, it's sci-fi. But what the Yerks are doing is they're taking the blood of these animals. Why would they be going to the gardens then? This is a very good question actually. So they're taking the blood of the morphs and trying to find human DNA attached to those morphs, taking that human DNA and cross-examining it, cross it with local people in the town slash city where the animals live. Which does make you wonder why they broke into the zoo. Or does it? Yes, it does. Because the original animals at the zoo wouldn't have that human DNA attached. Get it? So why would the Yerks go to the zoo to ask for DNA of the zoo animals when even the incompetent Yerks would probably know those aren't actually the Andalite bandits just hanging around in the zoo 24 seven. So why would they do that? Perhaps it's to establish that it was those specific animals in the zoo that were used as the battle morphs. Maybe they're looking at security tapes in the gardens and saying, right, so we can be pretty sure that it was these animals that are used by the Andalite bandits or human bandits now. They're all from this one place. Therefore, it must have all, I don't know, maybe they are looking at security, tam security cameras for the gardens and saying, right, so that at what point can we see somebody acquiring that specific, specific animal? Maybe it turned out to be a dead end. It does sort of work like that. That's the only way I can see that making sense. But putting that aside for now, that long ramble, what the Yerks are doing now, as opposed to going and collecting that DNA there, is finding the DNA from blood samples from the battles, taking that human DNA. So they've probably got that now. They've probably got the DNA of Jake, Rachel, Marco, Cassie, and Tobias. Yeah, that works. They've got those, those bits of human DNA, and now they're getting people in the sharing to come and give blood and all that sort of stuff, and they're trying to find matches between the human DNA that was attached to the battle morph blood, trying to find a match in the local population. It does make you wonder why Tobias's relative is the first to be found. Let's go look at the quote. Lauren, but that's my... I stopped. 
My mother. First name. Last name. Address. I stared at the screen. She lived only a few blocks from the three-room shack I'd shared with my uncle. An easy walk. One bus stop. I looked up at the map. At the flashing orange light. My mother. The light represented my mother. So now we know what the flashing orange light means, as opposed to the green light, which basically just means... That's where that DNA comes from. The orange one is... There's this person here, and it matches with one of these samples we're trying to match it with. So that's what the orange light means, that's what they find out. It turns out to be Lauren, who's Tobias's mother. Now we will discuss this more, but let's now go over what happens next, and that is the Yerks come in, specifically Granny Controller comes in. <laughs> we'll call her Mavis. Mavis comes in and attacks the Animorphs, and what Jake wants Axe to do is to get rid of this flashing orange one. Just get rid of that information. Axe, Jake said in private thought speak. Work fast. Erase Tobias's mother from the database. The controller won't shoot. She can't risk hitting the computers. Yes, Prince Jake. Axe's stork eyes swung from the controller to Jake, then back to the controller. His fingers raced over the keyboard. Axe, how's it going? Not well, Prince Jake. I have encountered an unexpected second level of security. I can break through, but it will take a few moments. I could see the human controller. She circled the perimeter, weapon aimed, still not firing. They had found a DNA match and she knew it. She couldn't jeopardize the research. She couldn't shoot. Prince Jake, I had almost broken the security code, he said. 30 seconds more at the keyboard and leave it, Axe, let's go. Axe is unsuccessful in removing Lauren's, Lauren's data from the DNA tracking computer. And they have this bit of a stalemate with Mavis. And she can't shoot the computer because she, know, she knows that there's a match on it. And that's why Jake is trying to get Axe to clear the data. But soon enough, they get overwhelmed. The battle gets too much. And Jake has to force the animals to retreat before Axe can remove that data. So now there's a problem for the Animorphs. They know that the Yerks will now find their families. Not only th is that a problem, but they've spilt more blood. Actually, that's not even really a problem. It sort of is. They've spilt more blood in this control room. Yeah, it's not really a problem because, I don't know. I imagine if they found Blood from Tobias, they probably got blood from the others as well at this point, because it would have been from a battle, and they'd have all probably lost a little, little bit of blood somewhere. But it would be just to make sure that they've definitely got all the blood there in, in that battle. So the animals have left blood in this, this room, so the Irks will be like, ah, oh, just in case, we'll, we'll get that stuff as well. And let's face it, DNA technology, even back in the 90s, was good enough that the, anim the anim Animorphs know that they're buggered. And they say as much. Time. Yeah. Jake banged his fist into the side of the pen. Cassie and the doe jumped. And we just ran out. Why didn't I think this through? No, I had to go for the surprise. In. Out. Before they know we're there. Yeah, that worked. If they didn't have samples of our morph blood before, they do now. We left our DNA all over their computer room. Man. He rubbed his hands over his face. What was I thinking? You were thinking the longer we waited, the more danger we'd be in. Cassie tore off a piece of adhesive tape. The more danger our families would be in. And you were right. Our families. Jake leaned back against the pen. They're a bigger target now than before we raided the place. The Yerks know we're onto them. Once they find a match... He looked up at me, his face twisted with guilt. Once they find a match, they'll move in. Cut off any chance our families have to escape. So this is where the animals are well and truly buggered. Because this computer here will very, very quickly find out who is who. Because the way DNA works, it calculates the speed at which mutations happen in a DNA sequence. So if you know anything about genetics, you'll, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, and you probably don't even need me to explain this, but I'm gonna try to explain this to someone who doesn't know anything about DNA now, okay? So DNA mutates, 
every generation, a certain, on average, a certain amount. So say, for example, for every 100 bits of DNA, one changes every generation on average, okay? So that means every 100 generations, there will probably be about 100 different changes from the original DNA. Because if you've got one change for every 100 bits of DNA per generation, and you have 100 generations, that's 100 times one, you've probably got about 100 different bits of information there. So, for example, if a mother has a child, and we're talking humans, and on average, there are a thousand DNA changes per generation, per generation, then you can probably find out that through DNA testing, that he is her son, because there'll be roughly that amount of change in the DNA sequence. Okay, hope you're following. This is why DNA tests usually work. So like if you've got, uh, what's, so in Britain we've got like, Jer well, we had Jeremy Kyle, you've got Jerry Springer, that sort of thing, or Maori or whatever, and they do the DNA test. He is your son or he isn't your son. They're doing DNA tests, okay? So they're using this meth this process, this concept of there's only so many average changes per DNA in offspring. Say like if it wasn't the person's son, then you might have 10,000 changes, 10,000 differences in the DNA, rather than just a thousand, which you'd expect from a, from a offspring. If there's 10,000, you'd say, very unlikely that they are related, or at least offspring, okay? Where am I getting at with this? Tom is part of the sharing and he was handing out flowers to give blood. We can be pretty damn certain that he has given blood. So, if they've gotten Jake's blood from the tiger, and they've got Tom's blood, they will see, ah, we've got Tom's blood here, and this mystery human blood is basically related, like, next, basic, they can see that it's a brother. Certainly, like, within that same small family unit, that core family unit, they can say, right, there's only so many differences in the DNA. Tom's got one brother. It's him. It's Jake. So, within minutes of the animals leaving, the yurts will probably be like, bang, 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 bang. Right, <laughs> there's Tom's DNA. We matched it. There it is. Jake Berenson, that's our guy. So, they were screwed, the animals pretty much. What surprises me is that Tobias is the one who the computer finds first. <laughs> that would imply that Lauren gave her DNA, which is understandable because there's a big drive for it and, you know, she's probably has a lot of doctor's appointments because she's blind, so she probably does a lot of that, I'm assuming. So the DNA is probably there in the system. I suppose it makes sense because, or does it? because Tobias's normal body now is the hawk. Hmm. It is very curious how it works. So maybe when they get the DNA, you get all the different bits of DNA from the different morphs that they have. I suppose that would make sense. Again, we'll go into the analysis of that eventually. But they've probably gotten the red-tailed hawk blood and found Tobias's human DNA in there, and that's what matched to Lauren. But if they found Lauren that quickly, uh, if they found Lauren, I can't imagine it would be very long at all before they found matches for the others as well. Because you've got to remember, you know, it's not just the animals who need to give blood for this to work, it's their families. So if they've been to the doctors or anything like that, all they need to do is get the blood of any of the parents or siblings of the animals, and they find the animals. And they're probably doing that very, very quickly. So yeah, that's how it works. And this computer, this one we're talking about in this analysis is what brings down the Animorphs in a way. It certainly forces them to take their families out of the equation and go live 
with the Hawkbajir. So it was a major player in this series, even though we've covered all the quotes and it's very short-lived and it was it's just a computer system. But by Jove, the power of DNA, you know, it's great. And, and the ability to study DNA and sequence DNA. Sequencing DNA is what got the Yerks to, to find out who the animals were. And of course, because of that, Steve and Jean Berrison, Jake's parents, are both taken. So they would have been found pretty quickly after um, Lauren. And we don't know what happened to Rachel's dad, but the, the rest of the parents are all saved just in the nick of time. So yeah, this computer was instrumental in the end of the series, even though it was only a, a, a little part player. But one question we have to consider is, was there any Yerk technology? We're not told what sort of technology this is. But I'm pretty certain, in fact, I'm definite, I'm, I'm saying 95% certain that it's all human technology. Because they're in the bio services, uh, Midtown Bio Services Inc. And it's all the blood places and what have you. And we had these abilities to sequence DNA, probably not to the same degree as we do now, but I'm pretty sure it has still been very, very reliable. And the Yerks probably had human scientists who were who worked for DNA. And I don't think the Yerks would need any DNA need any technological input to do this task. Maybe Yerk security codes and whatever have you to help bolster it. But the main function of DNA sequencing and an analysis is already there in human technology. And they were in a building specifically for that. So I think it's predominantly human technology in this computer. We'll call it Frederick. Frederick, the DNA tracking computer system. Thank you, Frederick. You were, you were important in the series. And it took the Yerks a while to figure out how to freaking use you. It took them so long just, why don't we just look at the DNA? God, guys. It's no wonder Vista 3 doesn't seem to be involved in this task. <laughs> I probably didn't tell them. It's like, uh, guys, DNA? Uh, want to tell Vista 3 that? No, not until we have the results. Not until we can come to him and say, Slap, there it is. Certified, printed, published. There you go, Vis S3. There's the, they got the president's stamp of approval. It's got everything, you know. You don't need to kill any of your... You know, they're gone. <laughs> but then it'd be like, ah, oh, I knew it all along. God, gee, I'm so smart. <laughs> because I'm a Vis S3, I am the uh, Italian now. <laughs> what am I doing? But anyway, yeah, that's... Frederick, the DNA tracking computer system. Thank you very much for your involvement in the series. It was vital, most definitely. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Analysis. Next time we're looking at pew pew. What's that sound? It's a Dracon beam. We're going to look at Dracon beams for the next Analysis. That should be a that should be a fun one. I'm looking forward to that one. Might take a fair bit of research, but you know, not too much, I don't think. Thank you very much for watching. Join me for that one, and I shall see you next time somewhere else in the Animorphs universe. Ta-ra.